So ultimately, the Egyptians and the Mayans believed the same thing, which was that the two brothers became the two eyes of the sky, which are the sun and the moon. So here we have an Egyptian artifact dating to the time of Tutankhamun when he came to the Grand Canyon, and it bears the face of a Mayan. This is just something else that shows us that the Mayans were the high priests of the Egyptians. And this artifact that was found in the Grand Canyon in the early 1900s shows us on one side the throne name of Tutankhamun and on the other side the high priest of Tutankhamun. And if you look at the image of the high priest of Tutankhamun, you can clearly see that he is a Mayan. So we also have a tremendous amount of evidence of migration and settlement in the Grand Canyon. And in one area of the Grand Canyon, they found Egyptian artifacts and a statue of Buddha alongside each other. So we know that Buddha originates in Asia. And we know that during the time of Buddha, the Kushites ruled Asia and specifically India, where Buddha comes from. So we have the Tibetan Buddhism coming from the Himalaya region. Um, we have the Tibetan Book of the Dead. So something else is found in Tibet as well. And it's the largest canyon in the world. This is important because we know that the people who lived in Yarlung Canyon in Tibet also came to the Grand Canyon in North America because these people specifically lived in canyons because this is the type of soil and rock used to carve out structures and monuments. The ancient Egyptians and Kushites didn't build structures like we do today. They took existing mountains and canyons and carved into them. So the people inhabiting India and Asia at the time were Kushites and they practiced Buddhism. And just a side note, if you've ever read the book of Enoch, it states that Enoch was a follower of Buddha on the path of righteousness. So I wanted to mention Buddha and the Egyptians because of the Egyptian artifacts and the artifacts of Buddha that have been found in the Grand Canyon together. Because when you look at the Tibetan Book of the Dead and the Egyptian Book of the Dead, they both talk about the same thing, the path of righteousness or the journey of the soul. So we know that Egyptians and the followers of Buddha came to the Grand Canyon together during the time of Tutankhamun over 3,000 years ago. And there's a mountain in Asia in Japan specifically, and it's called Mount Maya. It's named after the mother of Buddha, and her name is Maya. So even Buddha's mother had the title Maya. So Buddha's mother was a high priest, and she was a Mayan with the title Maya. And it's interesting because if you look at the Indus Valley civilization um, or the ancient civilizations of Asia, these were Kushites. And we know that the followers of Buddha came to the Grand Canyon with the Egyptians. And it makes sense because they were obviously also high priests of the Egyptians. They also held the title of Maya even though they were inhabiting Asia instead of South America, or maybe they were inhabiting both. And um, this is why if you look at the Indus Valley civilization, um, you can see the similarities between the Indus Valley civilization and the um, Mayan and the Aztec and the Inca and the Olmec civilizations of South America. Not only in the pyramids that they built and their religious practices and beliefs, but also in the flora and the fauna that they brought with them from Asia and transported from Asia to North and South America thousands of years ago. So Buddha and his mother Maya 
and the Mayans and the Egyptians and the Kushites, they are all connected. And we can place them in South America, in North America, in Asia, and in all of Africa. So we know that regardless of what modern day scholars will have you believe, we know that these people traveled the whole world, they inhabited the whole world, and they ruled the whole world. Even Tutankhamun's wet nurse, her name was Maya as well. And she was also the half-sister of Tutankhamun. So here we have Maya and his wife. Maya and his wife had two daughters, and this is uh, Maya who was buried in Egypt but was from South America. Um, he had two daughters, and his daughters' names were Maya Menti and Tiawan Maya. So he was the high priest of the Egyptians or the overseer of the treasury, and he spoke the Chicha Itza language or the language of the Mayans. And he also spoke the language of the Egyptians. And he was buried in Egypt, even though he was from Chicha Itza. And this is the burial chamber of Maya. And you can see that he is dressed like an Egyptian. And everything about his tomb is just like all of the other Egyptians buried in Egypt, except he has the Chicha Itza language on the ceiling of his tomb giving his name, Maya, where he comes from, and the date he arrived. And we also have things like the cocaine mummies, which we know were Egyptian mummies found in Egypt, and they had cocaine in their system, and we know cocaine comes from South America. So I've told you guys about Pangaea, Gondwana, and Beringia, and about the breaking apart of the continents from what used to be one massive supercontinent when all of the Earth's land was connected together and this was called Pangaea. So as you can see, Africa and South America are connected. Now, modern day scholars and archeologists will tell you of mass migration theories and Egyptologists will tell you that Egypt consists of Northeast Africa and Egypt was once divided and they say that Egypt which was all originally one land because see we know that during the time of Tutankhamun and even before him the Egyptians the territory of the Egyptians consisted of not just Egypt but all of the Middle East including the land of Israel so according to scholars, they'll tell you that after the Hebrews invaded the land, that the Egyptians and the Hebrews had these two separate kingdoms and that these kingdoms were once united. But the truth is, is that there were never two kingdoms united in the land because all of the evidence left by the Egyptians tells us that they did nothing but fight the invaders. They were never united. There were never two kings of Egypt that were united in the same territory. So this theory um, that modern scholars will tell you doesn't make any sense. But what I'm about to show you is actually the truth and it makes more sense than what modern scholars will tell you. So when we look at the similarities between the ancient civilizations of South America and the people in Africa, such as the Egyptians and the Kushites, so we can see the similarities between the two, such as the H-block pyramids, their um, spiritual beliefs, the step pyramids that they built in Kush and in South America that are exactly the same. Um, when we look at all of these similarities, modern scholars will tell you that um, they always give you this mass migration theory. But we can clearly see that Africa and South America and North America for that matter are all connected and there was a breaking apart of the continents so the land itself broke apart meaning that the two lands of Egypt the two lands that were ruled the south and the north they consisted of South America and Africa North Africa okay these are the lands of the south and the north and I wanted to mention the um, Egyptian mythology, the myth of Horus and Set. 
And the reason that I wanted to mention Horus and Set, because it's um, not only a very important part of Egyptian mythology, but it also tells us something much deeper. So if we look at Set, Set is the god of the south. If we look at Horus, Horus is the god of the north. So if we look at Set, Set has the head of a Mexican dog. Now, many people know this as the head of Anubis, but this is actually the head of a Mexican dog. And we can see that the head of Horus, this represents the Egyptians. The head of Set represents the South. So the South is South America. The North is what they call Northeast Africa today or the Middle East. And these were the two lands that were once connected but were split. So the similarities in the buildings that they had, the monuments, the pyramids, and their culture, it goes deeper than a migration from one uh, land in Africa to South America. But in fact, what happened is the land split in half. So modern scholars will tell you that the land of Egypt, which just consists of what we know as Egypt today, They'll tell you that it was split and divided, but the truth is the land of Egypt originally consisted of all of Africa and all of South America. And this land was divided. And of course it goes much deeper than the connection between Africa and South America. It was all connected at one point. And this notion that we as black people come from Africa only is ridiculous. So according to the Mayans, the Mexican hairless dog was a guide in the underworld. And according to the Egyptians, this dog was also a guide in the underworld. And I have a lot more to reveal to you guys later on in this series about the Mexican hairless dog and how it shows the connection between the Mayans and the Egyptians. And this Mexican hairless dog originated in South America or what the ancient Egyptians would have called Southern Egypt. So Set, according to mythology, became the ruler and the god of South America, and Horus, the god and ruler of Africa. And this is when these two land masses split apart and became two divided kingdoms. But we can see that even after the division of the land, the Egyptians and the Mayans alike traveled back and forth between the two lands. So in 3100 BC, the first battles with the cave beasts are recorded by the Egyptians. 3101 BC, Egypt is split into two kingdoms. So we have 3101 BC, Egypt is split into two kingdoms. And then we have one year later, the first battles with the cave beasts begin. So then we have, according to the Egyptians, the Egyptian records um, in 3150 BC state that the south and the north are part of Egypt and they are united. And it's not until 49 years later in 3101 BC that North and South Egypt split into two kingdoms. So as I've said, most scholars will tell you that Egypt was a divided kingdom and this division means that Egypt and the Middle East were divided by two rulers. But this division of the land of Egypt is about the actual division of these lands that we know today as Africa and the Americas. And this means that the Americas used to be part of Africa during the time of Pangaea. And then the land broke apart just like the myth of Osiris. His body is broken into 14 pieces with Set ruling the south and Horus ruling the north. And this is further proof of the connection between the Mayans and the Egyptians. So I'll leave you with that for now.
And just to let you know, I am currently working on a part three and part four because I have so much more to show you.